Good morning, this is Faith and Faith and Books. How are you doing? Um, it's a beautiful fall Sunday morning. I'm out uh, sitting in the parking lot of this park here that's near my house. And um, I decided I was gonna do a three-part series ranking all the Victorian novels that I've read in my life. Now, this is over the course of my whole life. I'm watching other people's videos on this, which I'm watching theirs inspired this. Um, I watched uh, Katie at Books and Things, and I watched the two that Petra and Petra U did. And I realized that I'm not nearly as well read as a lot of other people. But over the course of my life, I have read about 61 or 62, I keep losing count, um, Victorian novels. And so I thought I would rank them, and I'm going to do it in three parts. The first one is the Victorian novel I dislike the most, my least favorite. And then also um, Victorian novels that I've read where they're sort of a one-off, like just I've only read one book by one author, or there's three of them where I've read two books by them. And I'm going to sort of generally rank them from what I think has the least literary value to the most. And by literary value, I mean well-written and sort of um, lasting the test of time kind of thing. So <laughs> I wrote it down on this little piece of scrap paper. So let's see if I can be coherent. And I will link to Katie's video and Petra's two videos. Um, and the other thing that inspired this a little bit is Kate Howe's interview with uh, Professor Milbank, I think was her name. Um, that was a really interesting interview and I will link to that as well. And I realize that I, there's a whole, <laughs> there's many Victorian authors that I just have not read. Like I've never read anything by H.G. Wells. And I also linked to Mitzi Reads and Writes because she just did a video on H.G. Wells. Um, I've never read anything by him and I'm not a science fiction person, so it, they never attracted me. But I feel like I should sort of, you know, be a little broad-minded, a little more broad-minded, and at least read one of his books. I mean, he's really famous, and people still really uh, like his work, so I should give him a try. Um, I also have very little Arthur Conan Doyle under my belt. I've read some of the short stories. I read The Hound of the Baskervilles a couple times, but that was written in 1905 or something. It's not technically Victorian. Um, and I don't know if I've read other stuff. It's too foggy in my memory for me to say definitely whether I read more than that. And I have not, I've tried Vanity Fair a couple of times. I haven't gotten into that. The only thing I've read by Thackeray, who was a really popular Victorian novelist, um, I read a spoof he did on uh, Ivanhoe called Rebecca and Rowena. And that uh, that was fun, but that was more like a short story or a novella. And that's all I've really read from him. I I can't remember. I think I started The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. And I think I might have even started um, Daisy Miller. But I just don't like uh, James's writing style. Or at least I didn't a long time ago when I tried to read him. So, um, so he's not included. I've never read anything by George Gissing or George Meredith or Benjamin Disraeli. So there's a, there's a bunch. Oh, and I, I, I started to read The Heir of Redcliffe by Charlotte Young, and I DNF'd it. So there's just a bunch of Victorian authors other people have read that I have not. Um, so I'm going to start off this with my very least favorite Victorian novel, and that is Water Babies by Reverend Charles Kingsley. And I got interested in this because... Um, well, I think this book was on a list of, of books, you know, like an old fashioned education, like in homeschooling circles, the Charlotte Mason kind of stuff. And maybe this book was on one of those lists, but I also got interested in it in a different way because I was learning about, uh, John Henry Newman or John Henry Cardinal Newman, who was this intellectual powerhouse in the Anglican church during the Victorian age. And then he, have, as they say, swam the Tiber and became Catholic. And that was a big scandal at the time. <coughs> and um, this Reverend Charles Kingsley wrote something denouncing him. I don't know. It was, I don't think it was book length. I don't know if he wrote an article for a paper or he came out with a pamphlet or an essay or whatever, but he wrote something denouncing 
uh, Newman. And so Newman, in response, wrote his memoirs called Apologia Pro Vitam Sua, uh, uh, Defense of, of My Life, where he basically talks about his conversion. And um, so I've read parts of that. Um, so anyway, I heard about this Reverend Kingsley, and also he was an advisor to Queen Victoria. So, um, so for some reason I chose, he's written a number of books, but I chose Water Babies to read. And it was, I mean, if you think of a mashup of all the tritest, you know, heavily moralizing, cutesy, trite tropes, about Victorian children and you put it in this long tortured fever dream that would be this book <laughs> and I think the book is basically about what happens when babies die I can't remember if it was unbaptized babies or, or baptized babies but that's what it was about and it's like told as a children's fairy tale and it was the weirdest thing I ever read and it struck me theologically as just sheer drivel um so yeah it was i i did manage to finish it i don't have the greatest memory of it except being very confused and deeply unimpressed by it so yeah so that would be my least favorite victorian novel ever that i that i've read um, okay, now I'm going to go into the ones that are sort of one-offs or two-offs of authors, Victorian authors, that were all enjoyable, but had the, I'm going to first talk about the ones that I think have the least literary merit and then move up to the ones that have the most, or have the most profound merit. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say, now wait, I didn't rank these very well. Okay, I'll say J, uh, G. A. Henty. He wrote a lot of uh, uh, novels for boys or young men, adventure novels, and their historical fiction. And he, he wrote in the Victorian, but he wrote for many, many years, and he wrote many, many books. And so he wrote well into, like, the 19-teens. Um, this book, so I've read a few of his books, not a whole lot, but a few. But the one that I know I read that was during the Victorian age was Through Russian Snows. And I still remember what it was about. It was about these brothers. So I can't remember if they were twins or not, but they were brothers. And one winds up fighting for the French and the other one winds up fighting for the British. And uh, it's all during the Napoleonic Wars and when a Napoleon tried to um, take Moscow. So it's Through Russian Snows by G.A. Henty. He, his books are very enjoyable, but you do not, here, wait, let me turn off my engine. Um, you do not read them for the characterization or the beautiful prose. Um, the dialogue's really flat. Everybody sounds exactly the same. But it's really, it re he's really good at um, giving you the historical context. And he did a lot of research, so they're, it's, they're very accurate. And it's also very adventuresome. So there's just adventure after adventure. Um, and you always want to know what happens next. So they're just fun, light novels, for mostly for young men at the time. Um, so yeah, so G. A. Henty. Um, and then I'll say, I read two books by Frederick Marriott. He wrote Mr. Midshipman Easy and Children of the New Forest. And Mr. Midshipman Easy, I read that after I'd read the Hornblower series by C.S. Forrester and the first book in the Aubrey Matoran um, series, which I only read the first one in that whole series, but they're both about the British Navy during the Napoleonic Wars. And Mr. Midshipman Easy by Frederick Marriott, Marriott was actually in the British Navy during the Napoleonic Wars. And so I thought by reading this book, it would really give me information, um, about the, about that era in, in the, in the, in the Navy, but the, uh, Hornblower and the, and the Aubrey Maturin novel were much better at that. Like they, they, I think because they were writing, writing after the fact, they had to really set things up and explain things. This guy, he, he never talks very much about it. It's just a bunch of sailor's yarns about adventures. So, and, and rather meandering. So, you know, I didn't think it was anything great. I, I, oh, somebody came by. Um, I more enjoyed Children of the New Forest, which was a historical novel um, set 
um, during the British or the English Civil War, and it was about these orphan children that were in a lot of danger, and I, I enjoyed that one more um, than Mr. Midshipman Easy. And then let's see, what else did I, what else am I going to put in this? Oh, Diary of a Nobody. Now, this is a very light comedy. It's very gentle. It's almost boring, but not quite, I thought. Um, the thing that saved it was that it really gives you the domestic details of um, a middle-class life in late Victorian period. So that was made it really charming. I enjoyed reading it, but it's very light. Um, so that's Diary of a Nobody. And then, oh, um, I always get this guy's name wrong. H. Ryder Haggard? Or is it Haggard Ryder? I always get it wrong. But he wrote King Solomon's Mines. And that's a fun adventure story, too, but it's very dated. It's set in sort of mythical Africa, and the British are coming in, and, you know, there's caricatures of the, of the natives, and although there's also respect for the natives, too, but it's, all, it's, you know, it's very dated, so you have to sort of overlook a lot. But it is a fun adventure novel. Um, let's see, and then... I would put George MacDonald here. Uh, he's had some lasting impact because he really influenced C.S. Lewis. I did not get what C.S. Lewis got out of um, out of MacDonald's writing. Let me take a sip of coffee here. Hmm. Um, but I have read At the Back of the North Wind. I've read that three times, twice out loud to different sets of my own children. I can't remember it, and I read it on my own, too, and I just do not remember it. And I also remember, I, I read one of the princess books. He's got, like, Princess and Curdie and Princess and the Goblin, and I've read one of them, but I don't remember which one. And again, I just don't remember the plots. Now, these are fantasy. I'm not a big fantasy person. I do have trouble with the plots of fantasy, just trying to retain them. Um... So, yeah, so I would put George MacDonald here. He's got literary merit because people remember him and he influenced writers. But I just, to me, he, it just wasn't, it didn't make that much of an impression on me. So let's see if I've listed all the books here. Oh, wait, I got to remember that one. Okay, I do, I wrote these all out of order. Um, and then, um, let me see if I can, okay, then, um, um, I'll read, uh, I'm going to talk about books that I've read as a child, and I already mentioned this, Black Beauty. I think Black Beauty maybe doesn't have any great literary merit, but it is a wonderful children's book. Um, and uh, what was good about it is it's from the perspective of this animal, and I think that's pretty unique. I, I, I think that's the first book I've ever heard of where the perspective is from an animal. Um, and it was all about compassion for animals. So, I think for that reason, it's it's kind of outstanding in its field. Um, and then, of course, Alice in Wonderland, that has a lot of literary merit um, because it's really stood the test of time and is so clever and witty. Um, and so that Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass are both both up there. So I'm not doing this in any, in like a really precise ranking order. And then I've read a couple of books since I've been in Kate Howe's Victorian Book Club. I read The Romance of the Shop by Amy Levy. And that was really interesting because it was about these sisters who needed to make money and they opened up a shop and it was all about how they were, um, you know, coping things within this Victorian culture. Um, and it was well written. It was fine. I don't think it was anything great but uh but it was very interesting and i enjoyed reading it and then there's ladies oddly secret which is what they call a sensation novel and it was fine it was kind of predictable uh, the characters were good i enjoyed reading it you know i don't think it's the most profound work ever written um and then oh i should say where is that where did i list that um Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. I had read that before a few years ago, and I had no memory of it. And then I reread it with Mark at Book Time with Elvis and a group he had. And he, that's his favorite book. And reading it with people who really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it, like they got a lot more references, that made it really an enjoyable book. So Three Men in a Boat, um, I, that, that was a very enjoyable read. 
Um, and then I've talked about these books before, I think, in The Roar of the Sea by Sabine Baring Gold. I just read that like a year ago. And that was really atmospheric. And I didn't know how the plot was going to go. I really didn't know. The twists and turns were really surprising to me. The writing was just lovely. I really enjoyed that one a lot. Um, and I had never heard of that author before. I'd never heard of the book before. Uh, I heard about it through Kate Howe. Um, and then The Little Minister by J.M. Barry. And it, uh, Amy at the Dusty Bookshelf really loves J.M. Barry. <laughs> she mentioned this book. Really lovely book. It's I'm due for a reread of it because I barely remember it. I just remember that I really thoroughly enjoyed it when I read it years and years ago. Um, and then Tom Brown's School Days. That's a really fun book. It's set in the school, the rugby school, where the sport rugby comes from. And it's early Victorian, I think. It was, I think it was written like 1847 or something like that. So it's very early. And there were a lot of references I didn't understand. I don't understand rugby. And there, there were just so many, you know, Victorian British cultural references. So part of it just I didn't get. But it's just a fun boy story about this boy at a boarding school and all his adventures and all the fighting. There were all sorts of fighting and, and groups of boys and uh, competitions and then doing kind things and interesting teachers. And it's just a fun book. It's kind of like the granddaddy of the British school uh, stories, you know, like I think Harry Potter owes a lot to uh, Tom Brown School Days. I got to drink my coffee while it's still warm. Um, okay, so then what other books have I not mentioned? All right, and then... Okay, okay, a couple more. Um, I've read two of Robert Louis Stevenson's uh, books, uh, Treasure Island and Kidnapped. Love them both. Kidnapped has a lot of references to the Civil War going on in Scotland. So I also missed references there. And you don't quite, I didn't quite get it. But the story itself was so interesting. And I think if you've ever read The 39 Steps by John Buchan, he owes a lot to kidnap because it's about this boy who gets kidnapped and then has to escape and travel back while he's being chased um, and solve a mystery. So I think 39 Steps owes a lot to kidnap. I mean, of course, Treasure Island is a classic. Um, let's see. Oh, and I have to talk about a book by uh, John Henry Cardinal Newman in the Catholic Church. Now he's he's now a saint. And I, a couple of Victobers ago, I read Callista by him. And that's a historical novel set in maybe the third or fourth century in North Africa. And this was after there had been a lot of conversion to Christianity, but then there was this backlash of persecution. People had fallen away from it. And it's about, I'm trying to remember, I know St. Cyprian, I think it was St. Cyprian really figured in this. And Callista, I think, is also a saint. And it's about, she was a pagan, and it was about how she converts in this time of real turmoil. It was... Uh, Newman has a very stiff, formal Victorian style. Took a little while to get into that, but once I did, I found it really, really fascinating. So it was a little bit hard to get into, but once I got into it, I really enjoyed it a lot. Um, and then, let's see, there was something... Oh, Wilkie Collins. I've read The Moonstone and The Woman in White. I think we're supposed to reread that at the end of this year in the Victorian Book Club, A uh, Woman in White, which I want to because... I've read both these books and maybe The Moonstone more than once, and I barely remember the plots. I don't know why I didn't retain. Why is it that sometimes you retain a lot and other times you don't? But um, so, yeah, so I've read those two, and uh, Wilkie Collins, you know, writes really well. Um, so he's good. And is that about it? Oh, and The Picture of Dorian Gray. I love that novel. I think Oscar Wilde was so brilliant. Um, and that's just a very, very uh, profound book. And then my last one-off book that I'm going to talk about, which I think has the greatest literary uh, merit, is A Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. That's just a brilliant 
really incisive novel that has just so much going on in it. Um, yeah, very, very profound. Just gobsmacked by that, reading that one. So I think that's all the ones that are just sort of one-offs that I didn't... I talked about Robert Louis Stevenson, Marriott, and um, Wilkie... Con Wilkie Collins, is that his name? Suddenly drawing a bike. Anyway, those are, those are authors I've read more than one. All the others, just read one by them. Um, or no, McDonald too, I've read at least two. Anyway, so 20 minutes already. I was hoping to keep all of these to just 10 minutes, but I just talk too much. I need to learn to edit. Um, but anyway, so the next... My next session, the part two of this, is going to be the authors, two popular authors I do not like, one that I have issues with, but I do like, and then um, and then the third part is going to be my three favorite authors and my very favorite Victorian novel. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I better stop talking right now. So happy Victober. I hope you're having a wonderful time reading lots of great novels. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.